behave. I'm feeling a bit fidgety. <laughs> The thing that concerns me most about the den and Charles, you know, she wanted to know if she could write the answers on her hand. <laughs> and then bring the numbers. <laughs> the numbers. We all know that the bright lights of the cameras, you've rehearsed it, you, you know, you know it all. But it's a very different thing when you're on the spur of the moment. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Revision done. Now time for them to be put to the test in the den. We know our business well, and uh, if we do forget a number or two, perhaps they'll be slightly more forgiving than they have been in the past. <laughs> My heart is Of course it is. Hello. My name is Dorothy McLaren, and I'm here with my business partner Chelsea Hayes to ask you for an investment of nine hundred thousand of nine hundred thousand of ninety thousand pounds for a stake of ten percent in our business school trunk. We help schools clear their premises at the nightmare at the end of term. So how did the idea come about? As an expat mum with a daughter at boarding school far away from home, I soon realised that she was collecting far too many belongings to put on an aeroplane. And f I furthermore found out that the school was not particularly interested in looking after her belongings over the long holidays. So we set out to test the market and discovered that there are over 33,000 overseas students at boarding school in the UK. Our holiday storage service helps schools support the valuable overseas market, but also schools are needing to be more commercial and rent out their facilities in the holidays. So we've helped schools maximise the opportunity of commercial holiday lets. So we've had this in operation for over a year at a leading UK boarding school. We have a further four contracts due to come on this summer and a fifth at final review stage. But the school trunk brand doesn't just stop there. We've also started extending it and in fact Peter Jones's crate has our uniform gold care service where we have name taped, cleaned and provided the parent with a complete report of the school uniform. So, thank you, Adrian, for your demonstration today. And, Dragons, thank you very much for listening, and we look forward to answering any questions you may have. If you'd like to, go ahead and open your boxes and, and see what you might find inside your returned boxes. Some may. <laughs> it's not smelly old uniforms, well, is it? it may be. <laughs> Maybe. You may not have applied shall for I, our uniform gold care service. <laughs> A neatly packaged pitch from boarding school mums Dorothy McLaren and Chelsea Hayes. Um, mine's beautifully presented. <laughs> oh, wow. Should we take it from this that you have a preferred dragon? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> in a word. They're looking for £90,000 for a 10% stake in their company, which offers an out-of-term uniform packing and storage solution to independent schools and the parents of boarding school pupils. <laughs> I think you've got my clothes mixed up. I'm not sure the last time I wore a skirt. We had your daughter in mind, I think, rather than you. <laughs> But before questioning can commence, there's one dragon keen to prove that he's a stickler for the rule book. <clears throat> Hi, Chelsea. I I'm Nick, but I, I think you know that. It's, it's one of those small world moments. Um, when the lift door's open, we have no idea who's going to come out. Uh, and obviously, uh, we've met before. And I, and I know a little bit about this business, albeit it was over a bottle of wine. Wow. So I think for that, according to the rules of the den, I think I need to abstain on this one, so I'm afraid I'm out. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. That's good stuff. <laughs> he may be a new dragon, but Nick Jenkins is well versed in den rules. If the millionaire investors know anything about a business before it's pitched, then they have to declare themselves out. With Nick Jenkins gone, it's left to Deborah Meaden to unpick the proposition. Um, you're trading already? Yes. So you're in one school. Which school is that? Rodine School. Rodine. And did you know somebody in Rodine? How did you win that no. account? No? No. Knew nobody in Rodine. It took a good six months of conversation after conversation with various people. Um, often we find that the house staff go, yes, please, when can you start? And then you've got to talk to the bursar. And the bursar says, well, how much money is it going to cost? So what are you turning over at the moment? Um, turnover at the end of this 
we are in line with the academic years. We're, we've already turned over around 65,000. We expect to get to 150,000 by September. And is, is that coming out of one school? No. no. We have, um, we have a further four contracts starting this summer period. Uh, okay. So we will be looking after around 650 students. So for every student that you acquire, what is that worth to your business? So in this financial year, sorry? 150 50, pounds. Yeah. Do they repeat? Yes. Yes. Almost all of them do. Yes. And then per school, on average, how many students are you signing up? 280 at a single school. How much is that contract worth to you? It's worth between somewhere around 35 to 45,000 pounds a year to us. With a steady stream of income and the prospect of future contracts with other schools, the entrepreneurs are top of the class so far. But Peter Jones wants to know what problem they're actually solving. What do they normally do up until you entered the market? What would a typical child do? The children actually use plastic bags, bin liners, anything they can get their hands on. Dorothy, the it's not as bad as that. I'm sorry. May I I'm, clarify I'm, my no. answer to Peter? You can do if you want, but I'm just going to put yes, you that's straight fair. there. I, I understand where I've you're coming from. Because I've been a parent, yes. arriving on the first day, yes. you will see rows and rows of trunks. And I think that most sensible parents who come internationally arrive in England and they buy a trunk that their child stores all their belongings in. So I disagree when you say they come with plastic bags, they come... I disagree with that, because most parents who can afford to send their children to a boarding school can also afford a trunk. Do you agree with me? I'm not disagreeing with you at all, but you are right. Some children do have trunks. Um, most children have trunks. So I contradict every student overseas arrives at the school, you supply them with these trunks, I think there's flaws, in my view, in your model. A setback, as Tuka Suleiman draws on personal experience to argue that the entrepreneurs are offering a service that cash-rich, time-poor parents have already got covered. And now, it looks like Peter Jones is on the case about those all-important numbers. And you've turned over 65,000 in the last year. No, Sorry, six, in the last six months that we've Six done. months. What have you made or lost on that? If we projected forward is the easiest way yes, to Yes, so we are projecting... Up no, no, I just want to know uh, the results the... up to that 65,000. What, what are your costs against that so far? I'm really sorry. My, um, our management account should be up to date for that, but I wouldn't... We're just signing off... Uh, how could we? So it generally, so the roading contract is at forty percent margin. Um, that represents about half of the, no, a bit less. We look at it on an annual basis. So we've looked at the, the way we've drilled the numbers down is to say sixty-five thousand of the hundred and fifty thousand projected for this year, which ends in September, which is round the corner for us in our minds because it's the summer period. And on that hundred and fifty thousand pounds, our gross profit for the year is is sixty thousand. And what are your costs against that for this year? We would make a loss this year of um, of this is the classic. Dragon's Den moment of forgetting the numbers. I think it was uh, 20, 25. So our costs, against, our costs against that are £85,000. To value a business at, at, at nearly a million pounds is ridiculous, the stage you're at. You are such an infant startup with no real proven track record or USP at the moment your very early stage, there is nothing unique that somebody else couldn't do, so I think it's far too early to consider investment, and for that reason I'm out. Peter Jones takes exception to the company's valuation and is the second dragon out. But Sarah Willingham hasn't given up hope of an investment just yet. So, just a couple, a couple of questions. I mean, I kind, I think I know where I am, but you, you might persuade me with the answers to these uh, a couple of questions. 
So, how many schools have you been to then? Oh my goodness. Good question. Probably um, physically visited about 40 to 50, I would think. Yes. About 40 to 50. So, of the of the schools that have turned you down, do you know that they are are they taking you on this summer then, or is it still a no? It's no. There's I don't. Thing as a, there are very few who've actually turned around and said no. It's that it is not their priority at the moment. Right. So it's a dear John letter. Yes. We'll put you on file. I think it's stronger than that in the positive sense, not in the negative sense. Our sales lead time is about one year to 18 months. So those 50 schools we're talking to at the moment, we expect to bring them on board in, in about 18 months. What I was looking for was all of the hard work and the effort that goes into getting these schools, what comes through. And we're talking about long lead times. And I actually think as a result of that, an external investment is not going to get their return on investment for a long time. A long time, actually. So I'm really sorry. I think it's a nice idea, but um, I'm out. Sarah Willingham has failed to be convinced. A slow return on investment eventually scuppering the deal. Now Deborah Meadon's left wondering what part she would play in the business. I think this is a strange forum for you. I just think you need the cash because this is a forum where you don't just get an investor. You get an investor and you get the thing that the investor can do to add on top. And the truth is you don't have to speak to that many people. You have to speak to them for a long time, yes. but it's not like we've got to go out to mass market and tell everybody about it. And actually, I expect you can do the stuff that needs to be done in this, leaving me thinking, so where's my added value? You just want the cash. So I'm afraid I'm out. Dorothy Chelsea, I'll tell you where I am. I really feel there's a lot of flaws in your model. Um, I, I feel that um, you may pick up or lose students every year. But eventually, this is not going to make you the sort of money you think you're going to make. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. And that signifies the final bell for Dorothy and Chelsea, expelled from the den with no investment. Relieved that we've survived, but I believe that we've proven our business and we know what we're doing and we're going to go out and do it. I'm just a bit worried that I got a skirt. Chance for us to see your legs, Peter. Yeah. Make sure you wear a pair of tights with them, please. We can't give up. We've got schools contracted to us <laughs> expecting us to deliver a service yes. and we'll be doing exactly that, so we're looking forward to it.